everyone, welcome back to another BME video. Today, let's talk about how to graduate from a top private university in the USA, specifically with a biomedical engineering undergraduate degree without any debt. I am very excited to have the opportunity to interview my friend Alex, who did just that, and you'll see him in just a bit. Today's interview will compose four main parts. The first part will have Alex introduce himself and talk a little bit about his academic background. And the second part will have Alex introduce the resources he used, the scholarship requirements, and the application process he's gone through. The third part will talk about his four-year undergraduate experiences in this top university, including his favorite classes, extracurriculum activities, and the most rewarding projects. And last but not the least, his future career prospect, advice for people who want to graduate debt-free or partaking the BME academic pathway. And before we dive into the interview, I just have two disclaimers. First, Alex's story should serve as an inspiration and not everyone could replicate the exact same path. And second, the exact same scholarship is valid at the time when he applied, but criteria could have been changed without notice. I also have a high quality BME playlist here if you are interested in getting deeper. Now let's meet up with Alex. Hello everyone, I am with Alex today and first we'll have Alex introduce himself. Alright, um, so I'm Alejandro Gaiona. I graduated Duke University in 2021 and I was a part of the David M. Rubenstein Scholars Program, which um, was a full ride merit scholarship that helped me graduate. And so I majored in biomedical engineering. Okay, so the next question I have for you is to talk a little bit about your high school uh, academic background mm -hmm. and what do you think are your most uh, significant significant achievements that helped you maybe get the scholarship? All right, sure thing. Well, um, in high school, I was valedictorian of my class and the class size was about 700. And um, it, it wasn't a prestigious high school, it was just sort of like your everyday public high school in America. Okay. But um, I think what really helped me stand out was advanced placement classes, which are sort of like the international baccalaureate classes that you're probably familiar with. Um, so by taking a lot of those, which were weighted on a different GPA scale, uh, I managed to push my GPA up to a 4.75, which just barely beat out my competitors. And I think that helps me stand out. But Aside from the academics, the, one of the really important parts was how much emphasis I put on extracurriculars. Mm -hmm. um, I was in uh, sort of state-based competitions, so academic decathlon was one of them. My high school team, we managed to compete at the state level, and okay. we had a similar thing happen with the Technology Students Association, which is an engineering sort of based extracurricular, which is also competitive, that has like little mini events. And, um, by putting my focus into those, I think that really helped me stand out because I was able to show off like medals and things like that. In okay. My applications. Wonderful. So, in summary, that would be like your pretty good academic scores wise and then your um, excellent extra, uh, extracurriculum activities. Yes. Okay. But um, I did have, um, so for example, the people who were like in the top five. Um, one of them was already like really, really advanced in like programming, and he didn't really feel the need to like take as many AP courses. So he built his portfolio sort of on those sort of projects because he had a very healthy passion for like building compilers and things like that. So um, he was accepted into MIT, and okay. I'm not sure how he's doing that. It, it was definitely like the kind of thing to think about, like okay, personal development. Personal development. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna display Alex's SAT and ACT scores uh, in the text in this video. Hmm. All right, the next question I have for you is how did you do school research and where and who did you seek help from when you have questions? Well, um, being from a um, first generation low income family, um, I didn't really have a lot of experience with college, but um, I spoke with my high school advisor a few times and even then, I was still kind of naive. I was mostly looking at just the big name schools that had a reputation because I believed with my like academic standing and extra papers, I'd be accepted to at least one of them. Mm -hmm. So I cast a very wide net and made a lot of applications, a lot of essays, okay. and um, Duke was the most generous with okay. their um, admissions. Okay. Yeah. 
So you mostly uh, seek help from your just like school um, advisors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And then um, I did actually have a history with Duke before. And mm -hmm. when I was in middle school, I took the PSAT. And okay. I scored in the top 95, uh, 95th percentile in the nation. And I think that really like helped me build that sort of report with Duke because um, I had been offered the chance to like participate in the Duke TIP program, but I didn't actually get to go. And I mentioned that in my application actually. And I think that really like connected with some people because they realized that like with my low income, I couldn't actually make it to that. And in the end, I could actually like go to the campus and enjoy myself. So that was a nice okay. little return. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Low histories back then. Yes. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about the TIP program at Duke? What's the full name? Of that? Uh, I think it's the Duke Talent Identification Program. Okay. And so they'll usually um, reach out to middle school, or early high school students and. Um, sort of evaluate like it's sort of like a gifted and talented program I'd say okay. but on, on a college level and okay. they recently faced down because of COVID but um, okay I think there's still like programs that are in the spirit of that to sort of offer opportunities to students okay you think that's a pretty common like talent programs like like across the nation that uh, universities offer for middle school, high school? I, I know they're similar, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the Duke TIP program was one of the very like notable ones because if it had like, um, I, I don't know that there's a lot of equivalents. Okay, cool. Alrighty, the TIP program. <laughs> yes. And the next question I have for you is, uh, around what time did you start applying for school and how long did it take uh, for you to go from start to finish? Well, um, I started around my junior year of high school, and from balancing courses all the way to like summer vacation, I was, you know, like looking at how to do the common apps and things like that. And um, yeah, it was just a pretty constant flow of looking at schools. And so the above, we've covered uh, most everything about um, Alex's academic background in high school. And moving on, we'll talk more about the finance part for this interview. The first question I have for you in this section is what type or types of scholarship did you get and um, did you get a full package for four year college uh, that composed of work study and do you remember how much it's worth? I didn't actually research schools that provided a full ride. Um, it was really a lucky break. I was expecting not to rely on a lot of financial aid and just like a lot of different scholarships. So um, the scholarship I received was um, a merit scholarship. Its purpose was to guide and support low-income first-generation college students by offering to cover the cost of tuition and acting as a support network as students navigate college because for a lot of them, they don't have that sort of experience with their family. Right. And so the David M. Rubenstein Scholarship Program, it started off with like a summer program just before freshman year of um, undergrad. And from that, we really forged a lot of connections. and. Um, by continuing to be um, in communication with the staff of the program, I, I really feel that um, my college experience was improved to as much as it could. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is a full package for four years, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, do you remember like how much is worth roughly? I think the rough like um, estimate would probably be around three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So that this full package for four year covers everything like tuition, yes. health care, housing, um, housing mm -hmm. and meal room and board. Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. I was really lucky. In in addition to that, um, I wanted to mention that um, there was also a number of conditions set to remain in the scholars program. So um, you had to maintain a 2.0 GPA minimum. Okay. And you also had to, you know, have good conduct and so on. Yeah. But even then, they were still very patient with okay. the scholars because mm -hmm. even if your scholar status was uh, taken away, they were still going to continue with the full ride. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It doesn't sound like very like stringent uh, criteria. Like no. Maintaining no. a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's very nice. Um, I guess the next question I have for you is, um, have you ever worked part-time during undergrad to help with more financial stuff? Um, or if you did, uh, how did you manage your time and study more efficiently? Well, um, I didn't personally work part-time, but many of my friends in the scholars program did. Mm -hmm. um, for example, at Duke, you can work at the library or with the Office of Information Technology, which mm -hmm. sort of works with like network outages and things like that. Yeah, that, it was just that um, I had trouble balancing my engineering courses with 
um, that sort of part-time job. But at the end of my uh, senior year, I did volunteer with a number of research labs at Duke. And I'm really thankful for that because even while it wasn't part-time, I still gained a lot of like research experience to add to my resume. Okay, cool. Yeah. I guess that full package is mm -hmm. really enough for you to not not working any part time mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Probably the most valuable thing you can take away from this video is what advice would you give to students who are ex aspire to graduate debt free from college? I have two pieces of advice for this. I'd say there's great importance in trying to present yourself as you are. Um, so start with that. When I was writing my personal essay in high school for the Common App, it, I really tried to give a vivid look at what my life was like. I came from a low-income household with like, um, so I lived in a trailer and had like holes in the roof and that kind of thing. And I was really affected by troubles that kept me rooted to the area. And at the same time, I wanted to see more of the world instead of just like grasslands and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I applied to like universities even in Britain just to really get myself out there. And so being able to express yourself sincerely is very important. Often the focus of high school and college students is trying to use a, like a thesaurus for like the longest synonyms possible because they want to look bright. Mm -hmm. I think plain language that tries to communicate with others is really the most important part because mm -hmm. admissions offices are staffed with like just normal people, you know, like in the end we're just trying to like talk to each other and really get a grasp on who you are as a human being. I will say there's a balance for keeping the appearances though. One of the first orientations that my scholarship offered in the uh, summer before our freshman year was to teach us proper etiquette to eventually give us a better chance of making connections. So um, they invited us in formal clothes to the fanciest place on the campus for eating. Mm -hmm. And um, while there, they you know they, they taught us how to like use the right forks for salads mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and they also told us about a previous scholar who was in the final interview round of a prestigious inter internship. And mm. it also took place over dinner. Mm, and apparently they were serving um, lamb. And so at the very end, they were rejected because they were asking what that green stuff served with it was. They didn't know what mint jelly was or that it was like traditionally like served with lamb. So um, that blunder cost them the sophisticated image they were trying to build. Okay. Yeah. So I actually showed up uh, to that orientation late because I was ridiculous enough to come in pajamas, but that's like a story for another time. Okay. So I guess. Yeah. That person just had pure bad luck because yeah, I don't I guess know. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. I, I'd say one has to strive to build up who they are so they can be sincere about themselves and be aware enough to grow up in society. You know? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So the above, we've covered everything we want to cover for Alex's uh, financial aspect in terms of the uh, scholarship and um, everything he mentioned. <laughs> Moving on to the third section of this interview, we'll have Alex uh, chat a little bit about his um, undergraduate academics at Duke. Yes. Okay. okay. So the first question I have for you is, how did you decide on a BME program? And what do you think about Duke's BME program? Sure thing. Well, um, I decided on biomedical engineering because while I was in high school, I really wanted to be a genetic engineer. Mm -hmm. and so. The closest thing Duke had in their program were a set of courses that fell under biomedical engineering, so okay. I just majored in that. And along the way, I, I took many, many different like fields because it was sort of a taste of everything. Okay. And in the end, I did get to the genetic technologies sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, by then, I was like realizing like, oh, there's a lot more out there that's pretty interesting. And okay. yeah, okay. that's about what I'd say about it. It was just one part of like a really wide umbrella. And, I went through it all. Yeah, and BME, in my opinion, is a very um, interdisciplinary field. Yes, it yeah. sure is. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, what are your favorite classes or and your uh, most rewarding projects you did in undergrad? Sure thing. Well, um, one of the courses I really liked were, was the um, medical uh, device design course. So over the semester, uh, me and a small group of students were guided by a uh, really prestigious um, uh, doctor in the field, um, Dr. Uh, Olaf von Rehm, who holds a patent for like um, three-dimensional uh, uh, ultrasound devices and things like that. Um, he's just really, really a uh, uh, respected authority in the field. And so our device was a sort of Doppler ultrasound uh, device that measured crystal flow in the radial artery. Okay. And so it sounds very complicated. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, and so we went from um, just that concept to like prototyping and uh, 3D printing, like the parts and mm -hmm. a lot of like ECE stuff. Or for those who don't know, that's like electronics and like uh, electrical engineering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Did you um, have like make a poster of the um, yes, we sure did. design thing? Yeah, okay. and, and presented at the um, Duke Pratt Design Fair, which is sort of like an event that they hold for the engineering students to okay. show their work. Oh, it's, cool. Yeah, really fascinating stuff. So. Okay. Um, do you have any regrets from undergrad or something that you wish you have done but didn't? Um, yeah, I would say so. So. Um, I was really, really like um, nervous about my courses, and I mostly stayed in my room and acted very antisocial mm. instead of, you know, actually just getting out there and having fun and making connections. Because mm -hmm. that's a really big part of um, being in a prestigious university like Duke. Mm -hmm. You really want to like talk to people and like get to know them because they're the possible like future leaders of various like you know, companies and things like that. Like they are the future. Yeah. Okay. So um, I really wish I had like branched out. Um, but I did have a lot of fun and make a lot of friends along the way. And, okay. Yeah. So you wish you have like maybe made a little bit more effort in like professional network building. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. But despite that, I, I feel like I really gained a lot of valuable experiences in those courses. Mm -hmm. For example, um, I went to Costa Rica for a summer abroad mm -hmm. program and. Um, worked on projects about like differential equations and modeling and things like that. That was really nice. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like overall, on top of that, it's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you also enjoy the program and the classes and the projects and friend friendships. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that was a really big motivation of mine. Actually, I wanted to use that um, full ride to really, really get the most out of my part experience, and so mm -hmm. I cracked down on like, the hardest you know, mm -hmm. engineering courses I could, and then I really did it some of that. Yeah. I got through it, so. Yeah. yeah. I really do think you'll make the best out of it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now we've come to the last part of the interview, and we'll talk a little bit of um, Alex's uh, career prospect for his future career goals. Um, I guess the first question I have for you is, um, after you graduate, is mm -hmm. it hard to find your first job after graduating? I would say so, yeah. But, um, so one of the issues was that I didn't really do a lot of extra things on top of my academics. So majoring in biomedical engineering, you really want like internships and projects under your belt. Right. I had a few projects, but it wasn't really anything that would get me very noticed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, aside from that though, um, I feel like BME as a major can be like a little cutthroat maybe because what it is, it's a, it's a lot of introductions and like because you're getting such a wide like view of different engineering fields, mm -hmm. you don't really become um, an expert in uh, one of them at all. So in comparison to say like what an electrical engineer could do, I think. Um, They're more but, specific. Yeah, being more specific is really good. But yeah. at the same time, I also know that it's just really competitive out there with um, engineering jobs being like snapped up really fast. So. Right. Yeah, it's hard to say really, but I, I value what I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's how I feel too. Like uh, BME is like scratching the surface of yes. uh, like multiple disciplinary. So it's like you don't really, yeah, you mm -hmm. have a broad spectrum of things, topics that you mm -hmm. learn, but you are getting, you are so shallow on, on most of those topics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, like they say, uh, jack of all trades, master of yeah. none. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, okay. Yeah. Um, but do you think this degree is useful for what you want to do? Yes, I think in the end. Um, I do want to get involved with research down the line, and mm -hmm. I think being able to be skilled in like computer design, um, circuit design, things like that, um, it really opens up a lot of doors. It's just a matter of like really, really focusing on one aspect to um, go forward. Yeah, yeah, and maybe like getting some of the like real world experience in industry or like real research, mm -hmm. um, like yes, building that real world experience is yeah. really the key to like moving forward. Yeah, and so some of the volunteering I did with labs really helped me push further in that direction. Like um, I helped work with um, nanoparticles in the Bodin lab and things mm -hmm. like that. That was really like powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know you are working uh, at a full time job right now. Yes. And. Um, you mentioned uh, you want to go back to research. Mm -hmm. um, I just would like to know what's your plan. Do you have a plan for yourself maybe in the next year or so? Or do you want to pursue a PhD or uh, find some other job? You know? um, I'd definitely like to go to grad school and really work on getting involved with labs that you can. Once I have a few papers in my book, I think that would be really nice. And from there, like, you know, um, a lot of grad schools have this sort of um, rotating sampling of like labs like you can, right. you can work with one lab for like a few weeks and then yeah. another one and another one yeah, yeah. and then um doing that and finding a connection i think is what i'll do 
Yeah, I think that would be really helpful to like eventually find out like what you're most interested in and like just nail down in that particular path. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I've got uh, one little extra story that I wasn't really sure where to fit into the interview. But mm -hmm. um, so I have a friend who was in the scholars program and actually managed to earn another nice scholarship um, later on. So. Um, while ours was for undergraduate, he earned something that was for um, grad school. Mm -hmm. And so, um, one piece of, of advice I like heard from so in like the final interview rounds of when they were asking him questions, they asked him, I think, very straight up, "Why do you think you deserve this, this uh, money or something?" Like that. <laughs> and his response was um, a very true to his character. He was very sassy. Mm -hmm. um, he said something like, "Well." Money is just everywhere, isn't it, or something like that? And it was just very confident and well delivered, and that actually won him the um, scholarship. So. Okay, so we actually got it. Yeah. Money is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that adds to the sort of being true to yourself part of um, what I mentioned earlier. Okay, yeah. cool. A little extra bonus from uh, Alex's friend. Yeah. Alrighty. Thank you for tuning in for today's interview and that's everything we want to cover for um, Alex's experience of getting this full ride and his experience in um, BME degree at Duke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, Jamie. That was really, uh, it was really fun to reflect on uh, my past experiences uh, and hopefully get some students out there mm -hmm. to get what they want. Cool. Yeah. Wish you a great future, Alex. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.